It is an offence under section 139 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988 to be in possession in a public place of a bladed or sharply pointed article. But as always, it's not that simple. Welcome back and if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. So as I said, the general position is that it is an offence to be in possession of a bladed or sharply pointed article in public. But there are several defences. The first and rather broad defence is that you must show that you have good reasons or lawful authority on the balance of probabilities. And this is covered under subsection 4 in section 139. An important point to note on the defence of having a good reason to be in possession of such an article is that the defence does not discharge this burden merely by providing an explanation if this explanation can be rebutted or contradicted by the prosecution evidence. This means if you provide an explanation, either in an interview or in a defence case statement, the prosecution is likely to look for some evidence that will contradict what you have said. Therefore, anything you've said about having a good reason will be thoroughly tested in cross-examination. Some examples of carrying something for good reason might be that you're taking it to a museum or a gallery for exhibition, or you're using it for theatre, film or television or reenactments, or possibly if you're going to be using it in some kind of demonstration. But remember, for any of these good reasons or any good reason at all, it is not sufficient just to provide an explanation. It may well be that the prosecution will bring you to court to try to disprove your good reason. Because, as I said, merely providing an explanation is not sufficient to discharge the burden of good reason. Subsection 5 provides the defences that you might have it in your possession for work, religious reasons or part of a national costume. There is also an oft misunderstood exception in subsection 2 which excludes folding pocket knives that has a blade that does not exceed 3 inches or 7.62 centimetres. The reason this is often misunderstood is because it doesn't just apply to the blade. For example, if it is a flick knife, or something often referred to as a switch blade, which is a blade that is hidden but extends at the press of a button, then this is not within the definition of a folding pocket knife. Similarly, butterfly knives, where the blade is hidden within the handle and the handle spins apart to reveal the blade, this is not considered to be a folding pocket knife either. By the same analogy, anything that conceals a knife, such as a belt that has a hidden knife, a boot that has a hidden knife, yes, those things exist, all of these are not considered to be within that exception of a folding pocket knife, and would amount to an offence if found in your possession. In addition to this, the exception for folding pocket knives does not apply to lock knives, that is where the blade is locked in position, regardless of its length, and can only be refolded with the press of a button. So this would incorporate any type of locking knife where the blade is locked into position, including many multi-tools where it has a tiny blade but is locked in position once it's opened, regardless of whether there are any other tools part of the multi-tool or not. If the blade locks in position when it's opened, it is not considered to be a folding knife and does not come within this exception that applies to folding pocket knives. It's also important to understand that there are several types of knives that are just outright banned. For example, gravity knives, that is where the blade comes out with the force of gravity. Stealth knives are also banned, that is where the knife or the point is made from something not metal. Zombie knives are also banned, that is a blade or a serrated edge that contains images, slogans or anything else that suggests that it's to be used for violence or harm. Also, and for the avoidance of doubt, a butter knife that has no cutting edge and no point is still considered to be a bladed article. However, and conversely, a screwdriver has been held not to be a bladed article. And as a broad caveat to all of the explanations herein, I hope it goes without saying that you cannot and must not use any article, whether bladed, pointed or not, to threaten anyone else with harm. It's also worth noting that there are specific laws and powers to search for bladed or pointed articles in respect of schools, gangs, prisons and courts to name a few. So when it comes down to it, there are very limited circumstances in which you are permitted to carry a bladed or pointed article. 
unless you can show good reason that isn't rebutted by prosecution evidence, unless it's a tool for your trade and you can show that you were going to work or coming from work or at work at the time and had a reason to have it on you in relation to your work, or unless it's for religious reasons, for example the Sikh Kirpan, the only way you can justify being in a public place with a bladed or pointed article is if it is a folding pocket knife that is no longer than 3 inches or 7.62 centimeters. It does not lock, it is not concealed, it is not gravity fed, or any of the restricted elements that I've mentioned herein, including restricted locations as I've mentioned, such as airports, courts, and so on. So if you are out camping or hiking and you feel the need to take some kind of blade with you, make sure it complies with all of these restrictions and you should be okay. But as always, if you're in any doubt, you must seek formal legal advice first. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Please do subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see my future videos. And thank you for watching.